Hello and welcome to the last week of this course. In this week I will talk about performance opti optimization in Python. So um, in other words, how you can make your code run quicker um, or yeah, different methods of just executing a program efficiently or for example, um, yeah, keeping a program running while you do something other uh, does something else in this program. Um, and yeah, for this we will use multiprocessing and multithreading. And first of all, I will talk about um, what this is. So what is multiprocessing and what is multithreading? So uh, yeah, these are two different things, but they kind of aim to do something similar. Um, first of all, multiprocessing is, um, yeah, the concept is depicted on the left side here, where you have um, kind of, um, yeah, a system memory. And this is basically, uh, basically your RAM, your um, just memory that the computer uses to do computations, to store your variables and so on. And then you have different processes that all use part of this memory, but they all have their same like cache and um, they all have the uh, yeah, a different share of this memory. So they all have a different part of the memory associated to this process. And then, um, yeah, they can work on that part, but not really yeah, take parts from other parts of the memory or take data from other parts of the memory. Um, and also they are using different cores of the CPU. And um, this is depicted here by these boxes with uh, CPU uh, one at the top. So they all have a, a single CPU and um, yeah, modern CPUs basically all have multiple cores. So this is no problem. And um, yeah, you can have multiple processes running in parallel and this is really in parallel. So they are running at the same time and doing different things because the CPU is built such in such a way that it is able to do these things, to do things in parallel. And um, yeah, so that's how um, then your code runs in parallel in different processes. And each of these processes has its own memory, um, its own part of the CPU and yeah, can do things on its own. And then there are of course ways to uh, like basically join these multi uh, these processes together and um, yeah, let some of them wait for others to synchronize execution and so on. I'll talk about that uh, later. But then, um, yeah, I will first talk about multithreading and multithreading is depicted on the right side here. And um, yeah, this box here is basically how one thread is organized and yeah, it is depicted as like an actual thread here, but it doesn't really have anything to do with like the threads, the strings. Um, but yeah, a thread basically is very similar to a process, just that um, a thread is part of one process and uh, a thread has the shared, has shared memory with other threads in the same process. So um, as I said, these processes all have their same share, uh, uh, all have a different share of the same memory in your computer. And now threads have the same bit of memory. Multiple threads have the same bit of memory and are part of one process. So um, yeah, as you can see on the right here, you can also have these multiple threads and uh, yeah, they share the code, they share the data, the files. And uh, yeah, these are their own things. Um, so this belongs to the process and not to the threads. And uh, yeah, these threads can then execute code um, in parallel or um, yeah, also not in parallel as you will see uh, with Python. And what I mean by that is that um, multi-threading doesn't really work as you would expect in Python. And this is due to the global interpreter lock. It's also called GIL. And um, yeah, what this is, is basically uh, that your Python interpreter, which is the program that runs your Python code, that is not really able to run um, in parallel on multiple CPU cores. And it's only really able to do one thing at a time. So if you have multiple threads in your Python program, then they will not run really in parallel. 
but they will run concurrently. And um, yeah, the difference between parallel and concurrent is that parallel is really at the same time. So multiple things can happen at exact the, exactly the same time. Whereas with concurrent processes, um, they will not run truly parallel, but they will be scheduled one after the other. And uh, the CPU will do some work for one thread or for one process, and then switch to another one, then switch back and so on. So they're basically like interlocked and um, not really at the same time. Um, yeah, and as I said, Python is not able to run threads parallelly. It's only able to run them concurrently. And this is important to keep in mind uh, because this will cause Python threading to not really be too useful for some cases. Um, but there are still some, yeah, some options that you have um, and where it makes sense to use threads. But um, yeah, I will then also talk about multiprocessing and multiprocessing does work in Python and it is truly parallel. So you can um, still execute yeah, code in parallel for the same program basically um, with multiprocessing in Python. Okay. So uh, yeah, first of all, I want to talk a bit more more about this global interpreter lock, and um, yeah, why the, why this exists, and for that I have this example here, where we first of all import the sys uh, module, and the sys module will um, give us access to this get ref count method, and what this does is um, return us the number of references that Python has to one certain variable. And um, yeah, Python um, will keep this number in the background for every variable that you create. And it will use this number, this reference count, to determine when to delete the memory for some variable. And um, yeah, when, when to still keep it alive. Um, so uh, if the reference count of some variable goes to zero, then Python knows that yeah, you can't really access this anymore because there's no reference to it. There's no variable um, pointing at this bit of memory. And um, yeah, it's just basically lost. So you can't ever access it again. And therefore Python knows that it can throw it away and use this space for, um, for new variables, for new data. And um, yeah, it doesn't have to keep track of this variable anymore. And um, yeah, we'll therefore delete it or free the memory, um, not really delete it. So um, yeah, here I created two variables. Uh, one is called A and it's just an empty list. And then I um, create B and I set B equal to A. So um, since you know that the list is a class and um, yeah, it's a mutable class, um, B will now be the same object as A. So if we change B, then A will also be changed because it's the same object. So um, then if we print this reference count for A, then we get um, yeah, the number of references for this list. And then I will set B to none and have a look again at the reference count for A. And what you would expect is probably that um, yeah, the reference count for A is two at the first one and then one at the second one, but it will actually be three at the first position and then two at the uh, the second position because yeah this method get ref count actually also has a reference to a so yeah it will be three one in this a variable one in the b variable and one as a parameter in the get ref count method so this one is also counted so yeah if we execute this we can see a three and two and um, yeah these are the numbers of references to some object in memory so now why is this important? Um, the interpreter needs to keep track of this to know when to release memory or when to basically free the memory and let other variables take the space um, and when to keep track of the memory still. And uh, yeah, if you have multiple threads running at the same time and maybe uh, creating new variables, getting rid of others and um, these multiple threads are writing basically to this reference counter 
um, it can happen that um, while one thread is writing to this number, another thread is trying to read that at the same time, and then you have a problem. So because you don't know if uh, the first thread is finished writing to that um, before the second one is done reading it, or if there's like um, things happening at the same time, one trying to read, one trying to write, um, this can lead to some problems. And um, yeah, there's not really a way around that. Um, or at least uh, Python didn't choose to really implement a way around that. And it's very difficult to do that. Um, there would be some options, for example, you could lock these reference values and only let one thread work on them. But then since you have multiple variables in your code, it can quickly happen that you get a so-called deadlock, uh, which means that yeah, one thread is waiting for one variable and still has a lock on another variable. Um, but the thread, uh, but the variable the thread is waiting for, um, also waits for another variable, which is occupied by the first thread. So basically, they're locking it's uh, locking each other, and um, no one can do anything. Uh, because they're waiting on each other to finish, but in order to finish, they need the other thing. And yeah, it's a deadlock, you can't get out of it, and it's basically a standstill. So um, yeah, this doesn't work. Um, and it, yeah, it's very difficult to get rid of this global interpreter lock. There have been multiple attempts to do this, um, and there are forks of the Python language which try to get rid of that, but usually they break the um, the libraries, the Python libraries. So um, the C libraries, um, for example, NumPy is written in C, um, wouldn't really work anymore without the global interpreter lock because they kind of depend on Python working in that way. And I don't really think that um, Python will remove this global interpreter lock anytime soon um, just because the libraries would break. And yeah, it would make Python a very different language from like basically one day to the next. And uh, yeah, that's the reason uh, why multi-threading doesn't work. Um, but multi-processing does work because in multi-processing, you basically create a copy of this interpreter. And then you have two interpreters working on different parts of the memory and you can't really have um, yeah one uh, influencing the other, and this is why multiprocessing works, but not multithreading.